I wanted to begin with talking a little bit about your very early days, mm -hmm. uh, not merely as a painter, but also as a professional who had come to uh, Bombay after studying in uh, Lahore and uh, becoming a banker. Yeah. Very few people know that. Yeah. So uh, tell us about uh, those early days. That must have been what, in the late 40s? I was in Multan first, where my father was. That's where I came and I joined Emerson College there. And Emerson College, I, did, I had to do my, I came from England. I was a school in England. So when I came, I had to do my FA. And I, this was during the war, Mark. Mm. So uh, I, um, and I needed uh, a classical language, which I had none. And I, uh, what classical language? I mean, I'd, I've been, what, four and a half years in England in school. I'd forgotten, and I went at the age of 13, you know. So I'd forgotten everything. I had all Punjabi. It all came back very fast. And uh, Urdu smattering, which I, from the childhood, you know, we had a master who used to come to the house, and all four of us would sit uh, writing the takhti, learning from him, and so on. So uh, my father's an educationist in, uh, in the real sense of the word, you know. So we were brought up with this kind of stuff. So, but anyway, in Multan, when I came, I had to do my, my inter. And so I, I said, oh, well, I'll do Persian. So we had two Malvis. Uh, well, they were teachers, they are Malvis also. And I've never had better teachers anywhere. They were fantastic in the sense that they made me love the language. Mm. You know, it wasn't a down, you know, drilling things into me. There was no drilling at all. It was reading, I read the Tuzke Babri, for instance. I had to write a long chapter on the Tuzke Babri there. And I was delighted with it, you know, the way they taught me. I still remember that. And Farsi has remained with and you. Farsi is my, my classical language. I got a high second in it. I did it in four months. I had to then appear for the exam, which you know, everybody else did. And I got a high second in for four months, beginning from scratch. So, and I still remember it. <laughs> you know, it's a great language. Yes, yes. It's a great language. <coughs> and uh, anyway, so I came, then I joined Garmin College. And I was, uh, you know, fully participated in all the college activities. I was in the dramatic society. I was a key figure in the dramatic society, in the debating I did, the sports I did. But no painting at that stage? I was painting, yes. They had an annual, annual uh, kind of an exhibition, you know, picture shown there. And I, I got a credit for that. I had a little pamphlet or a little certificate saying, you know, pictures such and such. If winter comes, I still remember the name of the picture. <laughs> uh, very happy days, but uh, I, and I did be a, um, I did an honors degree in in English literature, which is again uh, one of my favorites, poetry particularly, of which I remember yards of it, and even now it just, it just sort of drops in, you know. It does. I don't have to think about it; it just comes, <laughs> reams of it, and uh, beginning with Chaucer. I mean, again, very few people understand the old English now, yes. but it's fantastic, it's beautiful. Anyway, I did that, and then after that, a friend of our family had a huge printing press, and so I joined the printing press. I was inveigled into it. I was going off on leave, on chutti actually, to Kashmir, with my friend Teji Chawla. And Teji went and I was, said, I was told, no, stay back, why don't you try this and so on. And if you don't like it, give it up and off. And so, I, so I tried. I quite liked it. And I learned something on the job printing. And finally, I became the works manager of this press. Then came the partition. And like everybody else, my father was warned about this in a very surreptitious, quiet way in his office, that you must leave and leave tomorrow. Because assassins were around, you see. That's how it happened. Mm. And so we left and um, went to 
had to go to Simla ultimately because that's where the Indian part of the education department moved there. Okay. Some documents, some things and others were left behind and they came. They were fetched later on. M.G. Singh, for instance, who was the registrar in, uh, of the university at that time. He, he was in Simla and he came down to fetch some documents and he was assassinated there. You know, it, it was a very grim, horrible situation. I lost my job, of course. I mean, I went, I took six days leave to just send my parents there and didn't go down for 40 years. I mean, uh, um, but, you know, as Eliot says, our beginnings never know our ends. Mm. And what is a desperate situation can, can also have a beneficial result, uh, which you can't foresee. And it happens. I met, I met, met a chap quite by accident. Morris Bottrell, um, we passed each other and he looked at me. I never wear a tie, I never, certainly in Simla, I never wore a tie, I was open neck and so on. On this occasion, I was going somewhere and I had on my tie and it was the old school tie. So he looked at me, he said, were you at Imperial Service College? I said, yes, I was. So he said, so was I. <laughs> So we shook hands, old boys, you know, together and so on. And he'd come to take over from Panchi Sen, who was then the works, uh, the manager of Grindley's at that time. So that's how I got it. So then they won both Panchi and he asked me, listen, would you like to join Grindley's? At that stage, I, was, I would have done anything, you know. I needed a job. I needed economic independence. I was 21, 20, 21. Exactly. That's how you entered banking. That's how, yeah. They said, will you go around? I, I'd just written about this in the, for, in the, the, the book on Grindley's, actually. They so went down and uh, they said, the, the, the chairman, um, the Right Honorable Donald Campbell is coming and uh, he's been on an annual tour. So would you like to go around, you know, and uh, be interviewed? I said, fine. So an interview was arranged. I went down. I was there. I knocked on the door and then I went, I was shown in a fellow called Gordon Reed was then the manager of Gr Gr Grindley's in Connaught Place. Very nice chap. So in I go and I come in there and there was this large man. Um, he says, well, come in, come in, young man, come in and you know, sit down, sit down, you know, opposite. So I said, I didn't automatically sit down. My father taught me that, that when you go for an interview, you don't assume that you, the chair is meant for you. You got to be asked, so I did, and so um, so he asked me a few questions. He said, first of all, he said, "What makes you think that you'll be a good banker?" So I said, "Nothing at all, sir. I have no thought on it." Hmm. Why do you want to join banking then? So I said, "Perhaps you've heard, sir, that there's been a partition in this country. You want a job." I said, yes, I want a job. Okay, you've got it. That's it. That's it, five minutes. Honest talk. No hiding, no big brushes, no nothing, you know. It was straight. I think he liked that idea. And then I was, I was straight about this. And I, I couldn't have been anything else anyway, so. And that took you to Bombay. And that's what took me to Bombay. Now in Bombay, I was there barely, a, I think, a, a week or ten days. And I was, a, um, you know, as a, as, a, as a new boy, I was being in, um, initiated into various activities in the bank. I was being taught so, uh, department by department as to what happens and so on and so on. And then tests were taken regularly, every week, written tests. To see whether you were up to, to it. See, the questions would be asked in writing and I would have to write back to say what I thought of it, you see. And then it would be corrected, then I'd be told that this is so. You know, it was a regular affair. So I'll tell you, the, 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 for lunch hour, you could, so I didn't know, I didn't know Bombay at all. You know, I just wandered out, you know, onto um, where the, the, the old Bombay Art Society was and so on. Just around that corner and the Kala Ghoda uh, atmosphere. Not far from Mint Road, you know, I just walked down the road and there. And I, I saw a Bombay Art Society written outside. So I said, let, let me take a look. I was interested. So I wandered up, took the steps going up, and 
the two women coming down, you know, grumbling and oh, all disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> there, and there, Susa was having a shoe. <laughs> and there, as I entered, right in front of me was a Susa self portrait nude, <laughs> standing, <laughs> coming right forward. There was a court case. I mean, the police got hold of it eventually. And um, that's another story. For obscenity. For obscenity, but uh, he, he compromised. He compromised. But, um, he, you know, they said blot out the, the genitals and so on. He put little c c bits of newspaper or whatever across these things. So he, he, he edited his own work, you know. Uh, I won't tell you what the others said about this thing, but uh, the Akbar didn't. Akbar, Akbar Padamsi. Uh, yeah, well, he fought the, the case. Huh? He fought the case. He fought the case, and uh, and he was very young, very tough, and that's another long, big, long story <laughs> about which I'll tell you later. But anyway, uh, when I told Akbar that this had happened, he says, you know, the man's castrated himself. You don't if you believe something, you don't. First of all, if you don't believe it, you don't put it down. But if you put it down, you got to stand by it. You know. However, I mean, the, the, I am sort of being waylaid by these uh, these ideas and so on. The fact is, that's uh, that was my entry point. I, I met Susa. We got to know each other. Then gradually met everybody else. And then I got to know Palsika in a very strange way. Uh, Renu, my wife, fought in my wife then, but she was traveling to England f to do her BA in psychology and philosophy in London University. And she was sharing a cabin with somebody who would actually um, been in the JJ school, and she knew Palsika well. So they both talked to each other and said, well, I'll ask Palsika to go and see Krishna. And he did. He came and saw me. A wonderful man. Really a great man. Huh. And uh, I had just, this, now this is six months later this happened, huh? after I'd been there. I started painting again. But tell me, the progressive uh, group was had there. already there. It was there. It was there. Uh, it was there. Uh, Ara was in. Uh, Ara was there. Uh, Hussein was there, and Souza. Uh, these were the three initials. Uh, Hussein came in later. Uh, so did Gade was one of the originals too. So anyway, I met these fellows and so on. But um, Palsikar actually, what really drew them to me was that I'd done a painting, which of a memory image which I had when I was in Delhi when Gandhiji was assassinated. And that evening, there was panic all around. Panic in the sands, gloom. And I, as I passed, came through Connaught Place, in the evening, these little islands, which are, uh, you know, there were islands in the, in the middle of the road, you know, and, then, and a lamp there. And underneath this lamp, lots of people clustered together. There was a d just intensity of gloom everybody quiet faces reading newspapers you know huh so this is like and i painted this picture the first picture i painted in bombay was news of gandhiji's death palsikar saw it and he said and the the the, the uh, bombay art society was celebrating its uh, golden golden jubilee or some such thing so he said, put it in there. I said, listen, I don't know anybody there. I'm a rank outsider. I'm just painting and let's see what happens. He said, no, no, I'll tell you what. I'll take this picture. He took the picture. He put it in. I've forgotten all about it. You know, when I went to see it, it was bang in the middle, you know, of the, of the, of, of the, of the dais. With, there was all my buddies around, all my subsequent buddies, like Hussein was there. Taiye wasn't there. Uh, Gaitonde was there. Heba was there. Um, Souza was it's there. It's a magical moment for you. You see, it, you know, look, I, 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 I tell you honestly, one never knows how things are going to work out. If, I, if it hadn't been for the partition, I wouldn't have been here. Mm. So this was a... And then they asked for me. I mean, I got a letter from... Hussein rang me up. He says... Uh, um, uh, 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 
So he came to my little room in uh, the Chateau Windsor, right on yes. top somewhere. So he came, he sat down and looked and so on. And it's an old story now. <laughs> but he, uh, he inducted me into the group. And the rule was there that each member of the group was allowed, there was nothing written. They were allowed to induct one other person. And I was inducted in. And at that time, the others also inducted people in. Gaitonde was in inducted into the group. Uh, Samanth was also good. Uh, for people who have forgotten Samanth, he was a wonderful painter. Uh, he was inducted into the group. You know, that's how the group functioned. There was no squabbling. There was a lot of fighting. Professional fighting, not not he's got further than I, no, none of that, but on 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 basis of ye kya kya, you know. And you 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 critiqued each other's work. Yes, we every week any any <laughs> funny thing is any new work that ever happened was seen. It wasn't kept, uh, you know, for sale. Galileo galleries to thi nahi usko ek hi thi and uh, so this uh, meetings at various places. My place became a, a place for meeting people. We were meeting in uh, the Bombay Art Society, which later on became, became uh, you know, the Bombay Art Society moved to the much larger building. And this became an, an artist's center. Yeah. Tell me this, uh, this discussion, was it on issues of uh, artistic ideology or uh, yeah. Technique yeah. or yeah, yeah. And see what what actually is signified this group. What how how it was different to everything else. They, it always <coughs> there was no um, previously there was the painting was like nice Sunday comfortable uh, things like nice weather well, still life yevo. Uh, they never thought that painting in itself is an independent activity too, in its own right. You know, it's not an auxiliary to an auxiliary to uh, a, a nice uh, sort of a luncheon party with a nice pictures hand or tea party. You know, it was basically that. It had become that. You know. But they were break, people who were breaking out of it already. It's not that the, the group was the first to break out. The, the group broke out in en bloc. And that was the insistence on form. Mm. That the formal aspect of uh, uh, it was being ignored previously. There was no such thing as form as a separate entity. See, form, they never even thought of form. They said people, human beings mm -hmm. there, yeah, yeah. It became anecdotal. Uh, all sorts of things were happening. But the, the, the relevance of the elements of painting themselves were never regarded as intrinsic. And that is what the group stood for. And it must have been a very exciting time because... Extremely exciting. Yeah. Extremely exciting. Because if you remember, around that time, there was so much else happening in oh, culture. Hell of a lot. Hell of a lot. In cinema, in... Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. But you see, what really shook these guys, and they, they think that is a European... Basically, the idea on, on the insistence on form, it was in our Shastras also, by the way. It, it's not that we were minus, minusing, it was eclipsed for a long time. I'll tell you about that later. But. The, uh, the 20th century, it, we, the, the Brits had made us forget that. Mm. And they, they wanted these uh, Mio School of Art, Calcutta, Ye, Wo. They were training people to uh, become artists who would then be employed in, in making charts, etc., for railways and etc., etc., you know. Adept at being draftsmen, basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, things changed. And you began uh, painting regularly. I was painting all the time. I mean, even even when I, even during the partition, when I came to Simla, there was nothing else for me to do. I was wandering up and down, doing landscapes, yay, wo, vagara, vagara. And I was, uh, even in Lahore, of course, I was very, <coughs> I, I, in school in England, I had studied art. And, and as a part of my school certificate exam, I mean, I had, I got a credit in that. 
and uh, you know, I was drawing, painting, and all that kind of thing was much. It it didn't happen suddenly, you know. So I was continuing this all the time, and I it 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 it, it, it gathered momentum with these guys. It, it it became very speedy, in fact, and. Um, the funny thing is that, you see, the bank, now the conflict begins rather early. I was pretty good at my job. They all thought I was good at it. The bank, bank people thought I was good at it. I was a good chap also, you see. But they wanted me to be, uh, it's a total life, mm -hmm. being a banker. Uh, you socially, you have to meet the right people. You got to belong to the right club, you know, all that, wear proper clothes, all, the, all that goes with banking, including your sport. Sailing was the thing in Bombay. <laughs> and it happens, it, it, it's never done, it's never told you better do this. Nobody tells you, there's no dictation. You are a member of a society and you, you have to uh, ally yourself with the modes and, 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 and the, the features of that particular society, the way they function. You know. You've got to be able to dance, for instance, on a dance floor, all that. You know. And here was the manager comes to me one day and he says, um, very friendly, you know, very stern in their jobs, but very friendly all the same. You know. He comes and he tells me, he says, come, I'm going out for a sale. Would you like to come? So I said, yes, sir. All right. This is in the evening. You know, he's going home. I had a, I was the accountant at that stage, a pile of work on my table. I said, yes. So I, I, I came, I went with him. He was an excellent seaman. And he drove, he sailed this boat. I enjoyed it, sitting there and so on. I came back. And a day or two after, he said, you know, would you like to sort of take a, buy a share in, 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 in uh, Keith Atkins and the other chap in the back, a great friend of mine, he had a share in something, he was sailing also. He said, would you like to buy a share in the boat? And after all, you, uh, sailing is a very good thing for you. you know, I said. So I said, I'll think about it, sir. So later on, I told him, I said, I said, I paint in my time. I don't think I'm going to have the time for it. You know, this, this went into my report uh, that um, his interests, uh, he says, he says they, they don't collide with what he's doing, huh? but uh, he's not extending himself in the direction that we would like him to, socially, you see. Later on, actually, when I when I I showed there and in London, they all came. Then I was a great boy, <laughs> because, because art it was beyond them. You see, in a sense. In fact, the the, um, the the board they bought a painting of mine from a show, really at Leicester Gallery. It was just hanging in the boardroom. I don't know where it is now, but it was hanging there. <laughs> when was your first Bombay show? In the, uh, soul. My soul. first Bombay, my no, I was showing with the group. I in fact wrote catalogues for the group, which I've got. You know? um, this would have been. Um, uh, let let me tell you one, one thing very important here was that this it wasn't it wasn't a European exercise being put into us uh, although Leiden and so on were there and they were the, the expats and certainly they had the literature they had the know-all and they were very influential people like Langhammer and so on and they, when they aligned themselves with the, the group aligned themselves with these people too and they got a lot of knowledge from them and so but uh, the, the, uh, the group was accused of uh, being, uh, uh, you know, secondhand, kind of taking that everything from Europe and becoming Europeanized and so on. That they didn't want. And certainly the Maharashtrian never wanted it. Mm -hmm. 
But the fact is, this was not so because they, they, we were a pretty free-thinking people. I mean, what you saw was the best things happening in the world. You can't suddenly turn your eye away from it. You know, you have to take that into account. You can't say just because I'm, a, I'm an Indian, I can't look at that. I mean, this is ridiculous, no? But they did. They were also very um, aware of their inheritance here. They went, at that time, there was a huge exhibition in Rashtrapati Bhavan. Hussein, Souza, these two for sure, I don't know who else. But these two guys came up and they saw these things and they were knocked out. They did, Hussein did a whole lot of drawings on Khajurao. Wonderful drawings, linear, straight, with great confidence, you know, marvelous drawings with a pen. No, no erasures, no nothing. You can't erase that, you know. Same thing with Souza. Souza painted some wonderful nudes after that. And the funny thing is, see, they were nudes all right. They were also sexy, like Indian sculpture. For people to say this is just beautiful form, you know, this is all baloney. It is sexy. It is inviting and it is there. It is a fact of life, you know. It is that honest. And they were absolutely imbued with this kind of honesty. So uh, you were showing uh, with the group. I showed with the group. But, but Raza, you see, Raza, Raza Padamsi and Souza went uh, uh, to Paris. They had a show there, which was a knockout, which went off extremely well. So they were not, you see, they were not go going there just like babies trying to learn things. Huh? They went, and, and I mean, Paris at that stage was blooming with the talent and people and ideas, and it was a total atmosphere that you plunged into, and it was impossible not to not to be uh, uh, affected by it. Of course, you are affected. And that must have uh, kind of diluted the group a bit. It did not, nor did they. The funny thing is, this is, this is, what, the, 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 this is what proves the validity of the group. Uh, uh, friendships occurred also during, I mean, uh, we all became very great friends, helping each other no, no end. I can't see this helping now. But I remember, for instance, and uh, Raza was in Paris. I was on my way to London. I, I was showing in London, and I was staying with Raza. He gave me a list of people to invite. He said, do get your gallery. Do invite these people. They bought my work. They will also buy your work. I mean, they keep their list packed away. They won't drive up. All sorts of, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very uh, a cloak and dagger society now. And it, it was absolutely open and helping like hell. Everybody helped everybody. They did, you know. Somewhere along the way with this kind of going to London and showing with friends and meeting and having these exciting conversations, Somewhere along the way, you would be thinking of leaving banking. I was, I was, but, you but I mean, you I, were there for fourteen years. I was there for fourteen years. Of course, I was thinking of leaving, leaving the banking along and so on. But you know, I, I was married. I wasn't selling as much as uh, I couldn't have been economically independent and so on. But you know, you get over this feeling, this jizik, you know, okay will, okay, will I make it, will I not make it? You get over that. I mean, the, if you are that fond of painting, then you get over it. And that's, a, that's the proof when you should, you know. And that turning point came. That and turning that point came. I was, the group was wanting me to leave. Can you imagine? You know, although Hussain later on said, Kya yaar, apne chhod diya, you were one of our buyers, you know. <laughs> it's a very sad day for us. He was one of the guys who came to the bank when the last day, standing at the portals of that great building, you know, the bank, <laughs> NBI, 
and we, 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 clerks were giving me a farewell tea party, you know, saying, you'll be very great, sir, ye wo. So, <laughs> these fellows were saying, Bal Chhabra and Hussain and Gaitonde, three guys, I think, oh, bar nickel, bar nickel, you know, are, this kind of thing going on. And when I came out, it's very funny, I got into the bank because of the tie. When I came out, the first thing they did was to take my tie off. <laughs> he said, you won't need this anymore. <laughs> At the same night, Raza was in Paris. Raza had a dinner party for me in Paris the day I left. It was celebration. <laughs> Does this bonhomie exist today? I'm asking you. And there was, I mean, you know, the, we were not, a, it's not a sentimental attachment. It was great friendship, great friendship. Or I mean, I've got this girl you know, doing my archives. We wrote letters to each other. Files of letters, you see them. And you've kept everything. I've kept everything. Akbar kept everything. Raza kept everything. This is... Uh, we, that book has been published with Raza, uh, letters between Raza and me, for instance, then between Bal Chabra and Raza. Then there's the huge correspondence with me and uh, Hussein, which began in Urdu. Is it published? You know something, it was given when the book was written by, uh, on me. In the first book, which Gayatri wrote, all I've, I'm a simple Charlie there. I gave all the um, files, went, all these letters, and I said, you use what you want. All the files were returned after it was done, excepting Hussein's file, which is a fat file full of letters, you know. His letters to me. That's tragic. It, it just disappeared. So what is she saying? She said she does not. We went to the press. We saw the press. It was looted there. And somebody took it away. I still have some letters. Of but the, the archives is going on. Yes, I'm having all these. But these things are. She, uh, she, uh, she's the proper archivist. She did. She's working for the uh, um, Raza Foundation also. She, uh, you know, she did the book. And this will be a book possibly. This ultimately, she said there can be many books in this. And then comes any major milestone after you quit? Something that you remember that really validated uh, your uh, decision? Well, I'm going to you know historically <coughs> then, well, for instance, I was in, uh, yeah, what happened was then I was in the bank, I was in Madras, and one fine day, uh, it's in this man called Chad, Chad Bon Gilpatrick. Chad Von Gilpatrick had a brother who was in the State Department also. Now Chad, this fellow, uh, was also a high flyer, and I think he was working for Rockefeller. And he came to me and he said, um, uh, how would you feel, <laughs> how would you feel if you were told, uh, if, you were, if money was made available, for you to go around the world, see this, see whatever you want to see, you know, and come back, go to New York and see what's happening there and so on. It's, it's a fabulous situation. The museums are wonderful. And you spend a year doing that. How, how that? So I said, um, yeah, but I'm in a bank right now. Oh, you can leave that. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll let you know. So I wrote to him and I thought, you know, I don't want to leave the bank just because I want a trip around the world. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty cheap thing, you know. Uh, the bank, uh, by the way, stood by me very solidly all the way. They wanted me to stay. You know, I got letters and so on. From there. Was this uh, Rockefeller offer part of the American effort? The first, I was the first on it. And you did go? Hang on. I was the first on it, primarily because I can speak. I think that they were impressed, they came and saw me, they talked, living well and so on. They thought, good chap to have around his knowledge. He's been to school in England, he's seen, he knows European art and all the rest of it. And Then I, uh, uh, I got, uh, then after I, I said, when I resigned, I said, then I wrote to them, said, I'm now a free man if you consider me still worthwhile having. So they said yes. Then I wrote back to them, I said, uh, please let me know what my obligations are. 
what, what, what are your expectations from me? And they said, none, nothing. I've got the correspondence. We don't expect anything from you. But we want to see and so on and so forth. And we are making suggestions that you go, you know, I'd been to Britain so many times in my own shows there and whatever, I was schooling there. So to see the other part of the world, I'd named the, the East I'd never seen, you know. So I went to Burma, I went to Indonesia, I went to Japan and spent three months, of, over three months, going to these different places. Funded by Wait, the Rockefeller. Right, right. But funded by the Rockefeller Fund. I had the money, uh, it was $650, plus ticket tickets and everything else, you know. And a library, there was uh, for uh, buying books and things on the way. It was a pretty good uh, deal. And uh, I mean, uh, it was comfortable. But uh, Indonesia was in the midst of shambles, you know, at that stage. It was in a terrible monetary condition, you know. I had to sell my watch and <laughs> all that sort of thing. But, um, but all of that, then I went to these different places, met friends, met Zainul Abuddin in, uh, in Bangladesh. W wonderful man. And I went there again afterwards. And uh, then uh, Japan, I met some wonderful friends and wonderful people, you know. It was a very worthwhile trip to see the, the, the other half of the world is living like that and their painters there were me, you know, we are not the kingpins or anything like that. Um, Thailand was a very wonderful experience being in Thailand, you know. And then, then in America became a, 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 an extremely important uh, thing. See, apart from now, my reading is that why did Rockefeller give me this fellowship? And then they tackled my my mind. Who are the other painters? Kya ho hai ye wo? And they were tra making trips. They made friends with the people I'd suggested. There was Ram Kumar there. There was Hussain there, and Bal Chhabra. Um, um, Raza Raza was in Paris already, but he came over. They gave they made him come over from Paris and so on. He was staying at the Chelsea Hotel. Um, Gaitonde. The funny thing, Porter McCree says to me, you know, he says, recommended Gaitonde, you know, yeah, he's a, a, he's very quiet. B, I don't think he's interested in painting. He's seeing movies the whole day, all the time, you know, all that kind of thing. I said, he's a quiet fellow, let him be. And if he sees movies, of course, he's uh, interested in movies, you know. But he's a very fine painter. And look what happened. Now he's the first guy who was showing in the in the Guggenheim after Porter died and poor chap and everything, all that, you know. What was the what were the themes of your work around that time? Well, listen, in, 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 now this is another story. Then when I was in Japan, I visited various people. Um, I saw a lot of museums and so on. And so, uh, the Japanese culture at its best, that is, when, when it produced uh, ink paintings, sumi paintings on paper. Now, there, you see, the Jap Japanese and the Chinese had a certain relationship over this thing. The Chinese was way up. And Japan tried to emulate, but then the point is that J Japan also produced great masters in, in, in the whole business. And it was very easy for me to then fall into that. But then I'm not Chinese, I'm not Japanese, I'm not living there forever. I'm never likely to be living in that situation, you know. But I learned, I saw the, I got all the brushes, the inks and everything else and paper and whatnot. Well, it so happened that on this journey back from Japan, came via Honolulu. Honolulu, we had a little room in a hotel. And you spend two, a couple of days in Honolulu and it's about the best, it's, that's it. I mean, you can't do much more than that, two, three days. And so. Then I came back one day, Rainu was tired, she went to bed and the, uh, the room was uh, just, uh, it had a double bed, and that's it. And there was a chair somewhere, you could weave your way around to the bathroom and there's a bathroom we had. 
So I wanted to work, you know, and I said, well, I've got all these inks and stuff with me, let me try it. So the only place to do that and make messes was the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and uh, I laid on the ink on the bathtub and uh, put this paper on it and threw water on it and Jesus knows what, made a design. You know? And then finally when I picked it up, it was horrible. <laughs> This is the sheet of paper it was dreadful, I tore it up. But what remained on the bottom of the bathtub was marvelous. You know. So there was this business, you know, the whole business of addition and extraction. It's a theory that it comes out. And I persevered with that, no, I, you know. That is, I was putting in paper, I was inking the, putting the, on a tub, inking it putting a larger sheet of paper from the top, better, bigger than the tub, so that when it goes down, there are rivulets which are made by the sinking of the paper all around. So I managed then to control that by th these rivulets, these uh, um, air gaps which go went down to th the bottom, f putting ink through that and following it up with water. And this kind of and it was fantastic. Was Christ beginning to appear in your work at that time? I had done pictures of Christ, yes. Hmm. It's I a very done. amazing theme for a, for a... For for a Hindu? Not really, uh, I don't mean that, but uh, I'm just saying for uh, you to uh, veer towards uh, the crucifixion and... Uh, well, it, it, you see, it, it... I wasn't trying to illustrate the Bible. Although in school when I'd been in, in um, uh, cathedral school, Lahore and so on, all the, the Christians were made to sit in the same class, they were there. The non-Christians who didn't want to be a part of the Bible class came and sat down near the teacher was on the, on the wooden platform. So I used to sit there. But all of us, two or three or four of us, including Deji Chawla, we used to uh, listen into what the, what was being said. How can you not? Huh? So I got interested in. So the stories have informed your work. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I remember as a kid of I must have been seven or something, five, six or something like that. And I'd, my father had just come back from uh, Europe after doing his PhD, and then he had uh, brought a little uh, copy of the Last Supper. And then he'd been, he had been to form Christian college in Lahore. So they wanted him to convert him. And he said, no, I don't want to get converted. I, you know, I can be very interested, but why the hell do you want to convert me? So he didn't get converted, but he was very, very au courant with the Bible. So when he, then I was doing this picture, I couldn't, and he showed me this picture, which I tried to copy. I remember this very distinctly, and I was disgusted with myself because I couldn't really do things. I mean, you know, I'm not Da Vinci. And I took it to my father, and he was very good. He was, he only had his left hand, you know, he lost his right as a child. But he said, he said, and he did a really a postcard size drawing of the Last Supper uh, with, in pencil, indicating the structure, people as people, mixing, so on, so on, so on. And so that, that's how it should be. That's how you should begin with this. So I was very, I mean, the, the But what is it about the whole idea about the Christian themes? It, it, it's a universal thing. If you look at it, of what compassion? No, it's a, it, yes, it is a very human, and it, uh, it, it 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 doesn't depend on being a Christian. You don't have to have those feelings only for Christians. You know, they're not sort of compartmentalized and only safe for Christians. They're meant for the whole bloody bloody world if they look at it with an open mind. And and those works, uh, while painting them. You've tried to bring out the humanity of the whole of thing. Of course, the, the, whole, the whole thing actually links up with what you're living. I mean, for instance, at the moment I'm thinking, 
that with all this note bandi and all the rest of which was going on you know there's a famous case instance where christ is shown a, 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 a coin and said who does this belong to the caesar on one side and on and cry they trying to trap him you see that uh, he was talking about the kingdom of god and he said where is the bloody kingdom of god is the kingdom of caesar you know then his answer is very political and very right you know sharply he says render unto caesar the things that are caesar's and unto god the things that are god you know and this happens continuously this i mean you can read this situation the duplicate of it which is at, at its applications for instance i did a picture act now that you're talking about the last supper i did a picture called the last bite which you should see in bombay which is with uh, uh, wazirani this is exactly the, the spread is exactly like but all of these guys are painters that i knew <laughs> who stand in the middle is christ <laughs> it's uh, with you won't sell it even <laughs> no but i'd like to get an image at least so i, I can you. use yeah i will i will it is there and all, they're all painted there's raza there there's swaminathan there there's uh, jay ram patel there there's uh, gaitondi there uh, bal chhabra is there and suza is there dayav mehta is there you know so it's uh, it's a <laughs> I thought I put all these crooks together. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, uh, again, now we have uh, moved on to your themes. Even the other series, your fascinations and all that, uh, people, you know, get stuck and say that you know you've got the bandmasters and all. But I would like to go beyond and say that you've got not just bandmasters, but people going about their daily life this is what it is the man masters are these bad these bad guys <coughs> where do they emanate from i mean you know this bloody partition had a lot to do with this thing we were everybody was i i i managed to get my sort of uh, exit from that desperate situation in this way i told you about other people were less fortunate in the sense they were tumbled out and delhi was full of this and in fact the encroachment by the it was considered a, an encroachment of the punjabis coming here not begging uh, there were no beggars and they were all trying to do something that they could including making that chunchana bhaturas which they were do, <laughs> doing at home they brought it onto the street into the great connaught place which is meant for the sab looks to go on and so on chabdis were brought there and the, these people uh, the uh, delhi was uh, thought that this is an encroachment on their culture what is this chana bhutura sit in the middle of connaught <laughs> but did, i did i did a whole lot on pavement pavement dwellers you know and uh, the life on the street and i did a lot for the trucks i did a whole bevy of trucks at one time i spent years doing it you know people people living in trucks i mean they become the truck is their home and it they assume the color of whatever they are carrying every day you know whether it is cement then they all look like cement men or mud or coal or whatever you know and at night they just sleep wherever they can i've got one picture of that still uh, no. the main quality uh, and what i take away from all your work is constant empathy yes with your yes uh, yes, yes geeta has all geeta kapoor who is a sort of theoretician in all of this you know i think she said something about that i don't make alignments with the parties i don't think that politics is anything to do with my politics has and has not in this sense you know but the point is if i become political i'll have to say goodbye to painting to be a successful politician you got to be in it 100% just as i think to be a successful painter you got to be in it 100% there's one um mm. question that i cannot leave unasked yeah what do you think of where indian art is today well you know i mean it's it's a, 
for, for, for one thing, it's, it's, it's uneven. Hmm? It always was uneven. So that, that is nothing new. But what I gather is from this girl who was down in Cochin and with this new uh, setup that they made. I asked her, she was organizing a part of that thing. She's uh, from that part of the world. A very bright person. She's doing a PhD in JNU and so on. Uh, she's doing my documentation. Uh, she, I said, no, what is it that they want? I mean, uh, what is their, uh, what is so special? So they say that none of us and the work of us is ever going to stay. So I said, that, so they, they, they're pitching themselves into some kind of, um, you know, uh, a voyeuristic kind of a situation. <laughs> they are viewing things in a snowball or into a crystal ball and saying, these will disappear. This will. It's hardly... The, uh, sitting in judgment in that kind of sense is ridiculous for anybody at any time, I think. You know. So you mean they, they think this... They this think we are, will disappear. They think our work will... We will certainly disappear, you know. I think W. H. Auden had a wonderful line on in that um, elegy to W. B. Yeats. You know, he says, uh, "For poetry makes nothing happen, but it has its own way of living, its own way of existence." For word of mouth, chalega to chalega. You're not going to kill painting, and with the with the with the with the, with the, with the best will in the world, those guys will never be able to. To kill, to kill art. <laughs>